Hi, I'm Richard from Frozen Well. Welcome to the first episode of my new tutorial series that's going to show you how to make various simple platform game mechanics using Construct Free. Each video will choose a certain mechanic and add it to a basic platform template. The starting template and the various mechanics we create will all be available for download from my itch page. A link is in the description. The art assets that I'll be using in the series are all from the 1-bit platformer pack by Kenny, which you can get from his website kenny.nl. Again, the link for the assets is in the description. So, for the first of these videos, the mini mechanic that we're going to make is a swinging blade. This can be seen in action here. Blade swings on a handle from a central point and kills the player when they come into contact with the blade. Ok so let's make a start. First of all I'm going to load the starter template. This template as you can see here just has a basic character controller that allows the character to run left and right and jump. There's also a function in there ready to be called when we get killed by the swinging blade we're about to create. Here's a quick demo of the project running so you can see what we're starting with. As you can see the player is running left and right and jumping about. So first of all let's load the game object that we're going to need to create the swinging axe. First off let's create a sprite and this has got to be the swinging blade itself. I add SPR to the beginning of all the sprites I add so that at a glance in the project I can see what type of object it is. Now let's load our art asset in for this and I'm going to set its image point so that it rotates around this when we start to swing the blade. This sprite is going to need an instance variable. It's got to be used to store the radius that the blade rotates on, so this will be used by us to be able to change how far the blade is from the hanger sprite. The next object we'll need to add is another sprite. This is the sprite that the blade is going to swing from, so I call this the hanger sprite. Construct automatically sets the image point to the centre, so it's fine left as it is for this one. This sprite needs a sign behaviour adding to it, as this is the behaviour that we're going to use to swing the blade. We also need to give the sprite two instance variables. These will be used along with the sign behaviour. The first variable we'll call cycle duration, and the second will be angle variation. The last object we need to create is a tile background object, which will be used for the handle that connects a hanger to the blade. This needs resizing to the correct dimensions to show the image with no repetition. That's our three parts needed to make the swinging blade now all imported. The next thing we need to do before creating the events is to add the game objects we've imported to a container. This means that they are all connected and when we place a hanger in our game scene then Construct will automatically create the handle and blade to go with it as well. If you notice when you click on one of the objects in the container the others in the container are highlighted red. nearly finished getting our game object set up, just a couple of small settings we need to change. The first is the sign behaviour on the hanger. We need to set the type of movement to value only, as it's only the value of the sign that we need, we don't want it moving the hanger itself. The last setting that needs updating is the origin of the tile background that we are using for the handle. This needs setting to left.
OK, so we're on to the writing of the events now. To begin with, I'll create a group to keep our swinging blade logic in. You don't have to do this, I just find it easier to organise projects by keeping related logic inside a group. First thing is to add an event that's called when the hanger is created. Within this event, first of all, send the handle to the bottom of the layer. This just means that it doesn't appear above the hanger or the blade. We have access to the handle here, as when the hanger is created it also creates a handle, with it being part of the container we set up earlier. Next, in the uncreated event, we need to set the magnitude and the period of the sign behaviour on the hanger sprite. We get the values for these from the instance variables on the hanger. This means we can change these on each hanger we had to the scene, so we can have different hangers behaving differently if we want. Next we'll get the events set up that are going to make the blade swing. The actions for this need to be triggered using the system every tick event. The first action that needs to happen every tick is to set the blade hangers angle variation instance variable to the value from the sign behaviour. We then add 90. This is because 0 degrees in construct is facing right, so we want to rotate our angle clockwise by 90 degrees so that our blade swings below the hanger, not to the right of it. Next we need to set the position of the blade. We do this by calculating the x and y positions using sine for x and cosine for y. You can see the full calculations are being entered here. So next, let's get the hanger sprite added to our game layout. It's just a case of dragging and dropping this into the layout. Once it's in, I set the position to a position that I know will work for the blade that I've created. Then I set the instance variables which are used for the initial setup of the blade. I set the duration to 4 seconds and the angle to 60 degrees. We now need to set the radius that the blade will rotate on. We do this in the uncreated event that we set up earlier. Here I set the value of the instance variable on the blade sprite to 45. Let's see what we've got so far. I run the project and as you can see we have a blade that moves on the radius we set around the pivot point of the hanger. There's still some work to be done to get it looking right though. We still need to set the angle of the blade to match its rotation, and also join the handle between the hanger and the blade. So, let's get on with the first of those, and set the angle of the blade. We need to add an action that sets the angle of the blade sprite. In this set angle action we use the angle function to get the angle between the blade's x and y positions, and the x and y positions of the hanger. We then add 90 to this value again, as we did previously when calculating angles, to rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees. Here's the project now running with the blade's angle being set. Just handle to connect between the blade and the hanger now and the blade will be complete. 
The first part of connecting the handle between the hanger and the blade is to set the width of the tile background we're using to the distance between its position and the position of the hanger. Construct free has a handy function for calculating distances between two objects, so we use that here. Just pass the x and y position of each object and the function calculates the distance. The second part is to set the direction the handle's facing. We do this by adding an action that sets the handle facing in the direction of another object, in this case the hanger sprite. With that done you can now see we have a swinging blade complete. The only thing missing is that it currently has no effect on the player when you come into contact with it. First of all I add a simple collision shape to the blade so we can detect the collision when we collide with it. I add this in the basic shape of the blade. Finally, I had an event that checks for a collision between the player and the blade. When this collision is detected, I call the player def function that controls the player's def logic. Here we have the blade swinging and killing the player when they come in contact with it. That's the end of this mini mechanic tutorial. Remember the start and end projects are both available for download from my itch page. Thanks for watching.